The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, when whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust and has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. I have seen hell. Actually, I was there just a couple weeks ago. The Greek word Gehenna in today's gospel is often seen by biblical scholars as a metaphor for hell. But actually, it's a valley just south of Jerusalem that today is a poor Arab neighborhood. In Jesus' time, Gehenna was the city dump for Jerusalem, where garbage was incinerated. So when Jesus talks about 
being thrown into the fires of Gehenna. Folks thought of a hot, smoky, disgusting place that they didn't want to be near. Our readings today focus on wisdom. In the first reading from Sirach, we are reminded that before us, quote, God has set water and fire, life and death, good and evil. Whichever we shall choose shall be given to us, end quote. When our hearts are rooted in God's love and not our own egos, we can make wise choices. Seems simple enough. And yet, if I'm honest, there are times when I am a knucklehead. Times when I get caught up in my own eagle, ego and make some sinful choices. As you can see, I haven't plucked out my eyes um, or cut off my hands, uh, which have at times been known to participate in my sinful thoughts or sinful actions. So am I destined for hell? Good Lord, I hope not. But I don't mean to be presumptuous. Yet, I really don't think so. Because everything that Jesus is about says that he is not looking for an excuse to condemn me or to condemn you, but for ways to set us free so that we can be all that God created us to be. This long gospel today takes some pondering to catch its message. I mean, if you are a fundamentalist Christian and you take this gospel literally, then you could be fi filled with fear, believing that God will send you to hell for calling someone a fool. Now, normally, it's not a good thing to call anyone a fool. But a vengeful God who would torture you eternally in the fires of hell for doing so is not a God that I or any mature Christian should believe in. But I do believe that in a figurative way, you are already in hell if you're not treating others with respect and dignity, the respect and dignity they deserve as children of God. In the seminary, my classmates and I would take great delight in calling each other raka when we were doing foolish things. But we always did it with humor and affection in our heart and not as a put down. So I doubt that any of us are headed for Gehenna or hell, at least not for that. This gospel passage is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus began his ministry by preaching about the kingdom of heaven, preaching about the path to true happiness. His sermon does not provide the exact rules for entering the kingdom of God, but rather it asks us to internalize the heart and the mind of Jesus. It's not about doing this or not doing that. It is about the why of doing anything. If our why is not rooted in God's love, then in one way or another, our hearts have been corrupted by our egos and we will make some pretty selfish and foolish choices in life. We all have negative emotions, but they need to be purified by prayer time and time again 
That must be a radical ongoing process for those who want to enter the kingdom of God. If our negativity causes others unhappiness, causes ourself unhappiness, it's not from God. So basically, these readings are asking all of us not to be knuckleheads. And when we are, when we make sinfully selfish choices, we need to have the wisdom to turn back to God and seek God's mercy. We need to go to confession so that our hearts can once again be rooted in God's love and not our own ego, allowing us once again to make wise choices, choices that are of God. For many folks, freedom means the freedom to do what I want. In the scriptures, freedom is the freedom to do what God wants. There can be a vast difference. Our God invites us to be simple and direct and to choose the Father's will because that's the only way to a truly happy life. May our hearts rejoice as we listen to God's word today and learn how to choose that which brings a truly happy life. Amen.